is, you don't really want to say that one book of the Bible is more important than another, but if I had to, I would say that Ephesians is more important than other books of the Bible. So, tonight we're going to talk about Ephesians chapter 1, forgiveness and adoption in Christ. But before we do, let me just pray for us. Lord, I pray that tonight we'd be able to hear straight from you through your word to us. I pray that we would understand and believe that you truly offer forgiveness and adoption to us through Christ. And that we'd be able to start acting like that too. Amen. Amen. Cool. So, turn to Ephesians 1 if you have a Bible. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I'm writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. So, he says he's writing to these people in Ephesus. That's a city. That was actually this ancient city that was pretty popping at the time. They had like a big stadium, arena theater thing, and uh, it was one of the cooler cities in the Roman Empire. Now it doesn't quite exist. The, but you can see the, the ruins. It, it was in um, what's now Turkey, the country. But you can see the ruins uh, if you visit there today, Ephesus. And, next slide. It was probably a letter that was meant to circulate to different cities, different churches. So when he says, you know, God's holy people in Ephesus, we could really fill that in with anything, because he wanted this letter to be sent to all kinds of churches in all kinds of cities. And so, if there was ever a letter that we could read as written to God's holy people in Gehenna, then that would be Ephesians. If we wanted to look at what would Paul say to us, if he wrote us a letter, what would he be saying? It would be this. It would be the message here, that... God offers forgiveness and adoption through Christ. God offers to forgive and adopt us through Christ. That's what this letter is all about. So, verse 2. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. So he says we have every spiritual blessing. Blessing. We're united with Christ. United with Christ. And then it goes on to say, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So we see this theme, united with Christ, in Christ, keeps coming up. So, you need an illustration, you need a visual for this. What does it mean to be in another person, like Jesus? Well, there's little old you, and there's big JC. And this is what happens, watch. Oh my god! Oh, that's cool! Next. Whoa, there you are. You're in Christ. You're united with Christ. Okay, so where Jesus goes, you go. Where Jesus stands, you stand. How God views Jesus, well, you're along for the ride too. So it's like, it's like Jesus is this train. Picture him as this little train, headed for heaven, headed to be with God. And if you are in that, you're going there. You're going to the destination. If you are in Christ, then you are headed for this destination. You're headed for wherever Christ is headed. And you get treated like Christ is treated. So it says that we're holy and without fault in his eyes. So we experience total acceptance from God if we are in Christ, if we believe in him. That means that we're completely forgiven of everything we've ever done that falls short of what God wants for us. Now, I've had a friend, you know, who thought that being forgiven by God meant that you got a clean <coughs> slate. That God wiped your sl slate clean, <coughs> and you could do better next time. So that your past sins were forgiven, and now, in the future, you have to do better. But that's not true. That's not how it is. Uh, every other religion, 
every religion, let's just say, a broad sweeping statement I'm willing to make about every religion, could probably, at the end of the day, be boiled down to this one message, one word, do. <laughs> do. At the end of the day, whether it's a list or, or just one command, the thrust of religion is, you need to do this stuff. Except for the message of the Bible. The message of the Bible is not that. The message of the Bible is, Christ has done everything in order to achieve God's forgiveness and acceptance for you. That you don't have to do it. He's done it for you. So, when we think about the extent of the forgiveness that we receive, it's important to realize it's not that we have our slate clean, but that when Jesus died, it happened like a couple thousand years ago, yeah, he died. He decided to bear on himself the punishment that we deserve for everything we've done wrong, for all of our mess-ups, for all of our sins, all our mistakes. Everything. Now that was way back then. But now, if we choose to believe in him, then we can accept, apply, receive that substitution, his payment for our wrongdoings, for ourselves. When he did that, he paid for every single sin that humanity, every human would ever commit. Okay? So he just, he did it all. He covered it all. So that now, when we place our trust in him, the forgiveness we get is all-encompassing. He already paid for it all. So that's different than a clean slate. It's past, present, future sin that's covered by Jesus substitute. He wanted to be our substitute, but that's not going to be forced on us, so everyone has a decision to make whether to trust in Him. Anyone can do that. I mean, even if right now you are in a state of not being forgiven by God, you can totally change that. You can totally transform your life forever by making a choice to put your trust in Him. And you just, you can just talk to God, pray to God in your heart. Just choose to believe in Him. Believe that He is the substitute, that He's the Savior that wants to rescue you from your sins. So, the problem is, even once we get totally transformed and we become a totally forgiven, totally forgiven person, we can still sometimes act or feel like we're not. We can feel like we're not holy and without fault in his eyes, as this says. It says we're holy and without fault from his perspective, from God's perspective. <laughs> But that's not how we walk around feeling every day, necessarily. Um, sometimes we just, our feelings just don't match reality. Sometimes our feelings don't match reality. And so, I don't know, imagine that, and maybe you don't have to imagine very hard, you have a crush on someone. And imagine that this crush asks you out, and you're like, You've never even met them. You can't believe they just asked you out. So really, I mean, you don't you don't really feel like you're this person's partner. But it's true. It's reality. It's Facebook official. <laughs> I mean, you can't deny it. There's like there's evidence. There's evidence that this is this is this is, this is true. Whether you feel it or not, it doesn't really matter how you feel at this point. It's official. You and God, if you put your trust in Christ, you guys are FBO. You and God. That's just how things are. You know, you can feel however you want, but your feelings may not match the reality of where you stand with God. That you have a permanent relationship with Him. So, I have a question for you guys. Go back. How might someone act when they don't feel loved or accepted? Whether they are or whether they aren't, and they feel like they're not, like, how do they act? Joseph? Uh, I want to use the first time I came to Moxie as an example. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Michelle brought me out to Moxie, and uh, I think this is actually my first time saying this story to Michelle and Zach. Uh, but uh, when Michelle first asked me out to Moxie, I was like, really? You're going to ask me out? You know, you? I thought you were this uppity type. And and then uh, so I get in there and I'm like, okay, this is this is pretty cool, this is interesting. And then I see Zach Gregory and I'm like, 
you're here, so this is one of those churches, because, you know, this is one of those churches, I mean, you're one of those jockey people who I'd likely push down a flight of stairs, given the chance. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is going to be one of those churches. And so I was like, I'm not even going to really pay attention. So I started acting moody, and I started acting a little bit depressed for those first two meetings. And I didn't feel accepted because I didn't think it was a legitimate church. So I was acting not myself, not as people know me, and I didn't participate or anything. But once I got to know people and realized Michelle and Zach weren't as I just described and that they were really awesome people and very nice, <laughs> then I started coming out of my yeah. shell and realized that this is like the best thing in existence right yeah. now. Yeah, I think that's a great illustration. I mean, for as crazy as it sounds, especially if you know people like Michelle and Zach, it sounds crazy, but we do this. We all do this. We judge people, we stereotype people and maybe we feel like they're judging us it's funny because you know we're really judging them but we feel like they don't they probably don't accept me or something like this but it's all in our minds it has nothing to do with reality of how they are how awesome they are so awesome so accepting um so yeah our feelings don't always match reality the fact that we're accepted uh how about emma they might like complain about like oh nobody likes me no one's gonna love me no one accepts me so the people will be like oh i love you They're like oh i accept you so they might like try and get you other people to like say that mm. so it's kind of a manipulative thing yeah. like kind of pout and then hope that people affirm you dan did you have something okay like it so i know like someone i know like kind of turned away from god just because of how she was like and she wasn't really feeling like god was there for her like, she just kind of had like an awesome faith and she just lost it and now mm. she's, I think, just don't think she's like as happy as she was. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling so match reality here. Zach. Well, just not feeling love and love in something, like in general, not just with God. Like my whole seventh grade year, I didn't feel like I was accepted anywhere, so I just completely like shut down. Like I didn't talk to anybody, I didn't, I didn't socialize, I didn't do anything really other than just show up, go through the motions, just leave. So just kind of shut down, and just didn't really do anything. Yeah, yeah, we can really withdraw from people. We can shut down, just close ourselves <coughs> off if we feel this way. Yeah. I think sometimes people do the opposite too. Like if they don't feel like loved or accepted, they're like, "I'm so awesome! I have all these friends, and like I am so popular, and like I mean I totally <laughs> would." But so like I feel like sometimes yeah. it goes it can go either way. Yeah, people will come across as really full of themselves, but they're really making up for their insecurities. Yeah, Tyler. No, uh, like personally, I used to be real apathetic, or. Or I just like blame everything that's bad going around me on myself, like say, make it, make it, uh, my, make myself think it was all my fault. Yeah, yeah, just really self-hating and beating yourself up. Um, we'll take one more, Ted. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Like some people just try even harder to be loved or accepted and change themselves. So. <clears throat> They try so hard. Yeah, Not that they, they make try to like make p other people feel bad, but they just try to build themselves up or... Yeah. People try to, to find the resources within themselves to like make themselves believe that they're awesome or something, you know? It's really sad to see this. Yeah. Okay, so 